Hi, my name is Vicky, and today I'm going to walk you through the new overlay mode in Cinemagraph Pro for Mac OS. We're so happy to announce that you can now add images and text on top of your Cinemagraphs in app, making it easier than ever before to incorporate branding and creative effects. Let's jump right in. If this is your first time using Cinemagraph Pro, click on the Tutorials tab on the Welcome window to learn how to navigate the app and start creating Cinemagraphs. Then go back to the Documents tab to access the Cinemagraphs used in the Getting Started, Intermediate, and Advanced tutorials to follow along and practice what you learn. Here I have a Cinemagraph created by the very talented Thomas Brand that I want to turn into a Facebook ad for Cinemagraph Pro. To enter Overlay Mode, click on the Overlay button in the Cinemagraph Pro toolbar next to the Crop button. First, I'm going to insert the logo type onto the Cinemagraph which I can do from the Overlay toolbar. You can also drag and drop an image right onto the canvas. Editing and managing overlays will take place on the canvas, the inspector, and object list on the left. I'll get into more detail of where each action can be performed as we go through the editing process. So now I have two Cinemagraph Pro logos and I'm going to select the one I want to remove and simply hit the delete key to do so. I can also do this from the overlay toolbar, but I like using keyboard shortcuts wherever possible. Now I'm going to click to select the logo and drag to position it on the canvas. As you can see, if I drag it slowly, I can snap to alignment guides that'll help me center my logo. The logo is a bit smaller than I want it to be, so I'm going to drag the grabbers around it outwards to resize it and position it back in the center. Perfect. Now I want to add a line of text below the logo that says, Create imagery that gets noticed. I'm going to click Insert Text in the toolbar and type. Now I'm going to decrease the font size so it's smaller than the width of the logo type and change the color. Let's say I wanted the text color to be consistent with our brand colors. Instead of just playing around in the color editor, I can choose RGB sliders in the sliders drop down menu and type in the hex code. I think I'd prefer it if the text were white to match the Cinemagraph Pro logo type, so I'm going to go ahead and change it. I want to use a font that matches the logo type, so I'm going to browse fonts in the inspector and play around with the styling. There we go. This looks good to me, but the white logo type and text isn't jumping out against the background quite as much as I'd like it to. So what I did was create a gradient background that I'm going to place underneath, just to make it pop a little more. When I insert a new overlay, it'll automatically be placed at the top of my stack order, over top of my other layers. I want the gradient to go behind the other layers, so I'm going to control click to reveal menu options and select Send to Back, so it's first in the stack order. I also could have used the toolbar buttons to send it backwards, but the contextual menu gives me more options. I can also drag objects up and down in the object list to change the stack order. If you want to select multiple objects, hold down the command key on the canvas or object list. Now that my layers are in the correct order, I'm going to resize the gradient to fit the width of the cinemagraph. By default, the image's original aspect ratio will be preserved, which is not what I want in this scenario, so I'm going to go to the inspector and uncheck Preserve Aspect Ratio. Now I can change the scale of my gradient so it's the exact size I want it to be. Perfect. Now I want to add Thomas's username to the bottom corner of the cinemagraph so everybody who sees the ad will know who created it and where they can find more of his work. What I'm going to do is add another gradient background like I did at the top to make the text stand out and tie everything together. Before I add another overlay, I want to start organizing my layers, so I'm going to double click to rename them. I can also hide layers if I want to edit an object without being distracted by others around it, or if I want to export multiple variations. For example, I could create a version with and without create imagery that gets noticed. I know that the second gradient layer should be before Thomas's name in the stack order, so I'm going to add that first. 
Instead of inserting a new image, I can control click on the first gradient to duplicate it. Now I can either rotate the gradient or flip it vertically so the darker area is on the bottom. I'm going to undo the flip vertical transformation using the Command Z shortcut and show you how to rotate objects on the canvas. Control click on the grabbers to rotate it clockwise and counterclockwise and hold down the shift key if you want to snap to 45 degree increments. You probably noticed that you can rotate objects using the steppers or dial on the inspector. You can also position and resize objects on the inspector by typing in the coordinates and dimensions measured in pixels, but I prefer performing these actions on the canvas. Now I'm going to insert a new text object on top of the gradient to finish the ad. If I don't want the artist attribution to stand out quite as much as it is, I can lower the opacity in the inspector. I haven't made any adjustments to Thomas's cinemagraph in the main editor, but if I had and wanted those adjustments to be applied to the overlay, I can simply check Apply Adjustments. By default, any adjustments made in the main editor will not be applied to overlays. So now the Cinemagraph Pro ad is ready, and I'm going to exit overlay mode. Because I'll be uploading the ad to Facebook Ads Manager, I'm going to select the Facebook ad preset to apply the best settings. Now I can upload it to Ads Manager. Remember to upload your cinemagraphs as public for a chance to be featured in our galleries and social networks. We're always so amazed by the talent and creativity of the Flexel community and can't wait to see how these new features will help you in your visual storytelling. Thanks for watching.